new patch is out tomorrow 6.02 we're gonna read out the changes and i will comment in what i think about those changes in general welcome everyone Next episode 35, I think. Welcome to the patch notes 6.02. Let's read it out. Stinger balance, lots more bug fixes, and one welcome change to help when playing against high pingers. Ooh, look, people might not have something to complain about. I don't know about that. We'll see. The gameplay systems change should be subtle, but it's intended to minimize the impact another player's networking conditions have on your game. Remember, this also would apply to the VPN players, but we'll see. Gameplay up system updates. Read it out. When a player fires a shot, it takes time for input to reach the server. Input, that means the mouse, right? When you click the mouse. The, to prevent you from needing to lead your shots, Varant implements servers rewinding. When the server determines the outcome of a shot, it rewinds character positions around the bullet to match the locations at the time when the shot was initially fired. That's why sometimes you see that a player dies, but he goes back like two meters, you know? It's like that, that's why sometimes you see someone, when you're watching them and you're observing someone else, they see something else and the body lands in a different spot than the, players will, the player was shooting. Finding the right limit for max rewind um, is important for reducing cases of anyone feeling like they need to lead shots or that they can still be shot after safely repositioning themselves. It's kind of kind of funny because there's no travel time, no bullet travel time in Valorant. Everything is hit scan. That means that when you're shooting a bullet, it reaches to the end point at the same time at, as it exits the the gun, right? So it's like it just appears. It does like no physics of an actual bullet, right? So um, that you shouldn't be leading shots at all in this game, right? For example, when you play Tarkov, PUBG, uh, Apex, all of those games have bullet travel time, which means that the weapons are not hit scan, they are projectile, right? So they have like speed of a projectile that goes from A to B. When we launched the game, the max rewind value was set to 200 milliseconds, based on what we deemed as acceptable networking conditions, factoring in some amount of additional input processing latency to play Valorant. Based on players' data since launch, we've determined that this value is too high for the networking conditions experienced by most of you, says Kevin Lee. So 200 milliseconds, think about it this way. 200 milliseconds is like the average reaction time of a Valorant player. Like... My reaction time when I was testing it out varies between 160 to 180, depending on the day, did I sleep well, did I eat well, am I focused, and so on. But it, like, it never goes above 180. 200 milliseconds is essentially the time that you need to react, right? So I think they aligned that because of the purpose of, of like aligning. They aligned both of those, the rewind and the reaction time to an average player. Adjusted max server rewind limit down to 140 milliseconds from 200 milliseconds. That's actually a big change when you think about it. That is one third. One third is cut, is being cut down. If you only play in games where everyone ping is low, you shouldn't even notice this change. In other cases, the impact from this change will be subtle, and most of you won't notice the difference. That being said, we, that being said, we expect to see the following changes in gameplay patterns. Let's see. So the expected outcomes are. Playing against players with high ping should feel less like you're getting shot after moving behind cover by a bullet fired earlier. Players playing with high ping may start to experience hit registration inaccuracy. Oh my god, my friends. You, you know what will now happen? You're gonna see on Reddit every day now. You're gonna see on Reddit every day someone's gonna complain that his bullets are not registrating because you know he's gonna be on a higher ping and he's gonna complain now that because of his let's say not the best conditions of his internet service provider valorant is gonna be quote unquote dog shit right that's what's gonna happen so what they're trying to do is they're gonna try to make the experience for the players who don't have any issues themselves so they can have better experience against players who have mediocre to bad internet connection. Which, in my eyes, is the correct decision. You shouldn't reward people for having shitty connections. This is not 1990 anymore. You shouldn't have this. Like, in general, 
people having bad infrastructure is shouldn't be an excuse for downgrading the experience for people who have good infrastructure, right? And I think considering high, like high paying should be considered above like 70, I would say. Right. So that's like when you have like a when there was server selection and you couldn't couldn't automatic server selection and you couldn't manual manually server um choose a server, sorry, English heart, then you were typically connected between twenty to forty ping exclusively. You were never getting connected to servers that had higher ping than that. You know? These behaviors already exist in Valorant, but we are shifting the needle for what we consider high ping to be less generous. We hope that this change reduces the frustration of players, the frustration players feel when playing against high ping players, and continue to minimize the impact of networking conditions on gameplay. Okay. If someone didn't read the other changes, I will strongly recommend to read the other articles. By the way, weapon updates. Okay, guys, you. If you are watching the stream religiously, you already know what I think about this, but for the purpose of this video, let's go through it again. We feel that Stinger is overperforming at medium to long range engagements at its price point. Forcing, force buying heavy armor and Stingers in both round 2 and 3 was too effective and lacked the appropriate nuance and economic trade offs. We hope that players can occasionally still access the strategy, granted they have the credits to do so. So, cost increase, I fully agree. I think the gun at 950 was too good. The thing is, this gun was broken, like actually broken. The gun was in some cases better than a Vandal and a Phantom combined when the game was released and no one was playing it. I literally had like 400 hours on Reyna where every round I was either buying a Vandal or a Stinger if I didn't have the cash. So every round... I was feeling like I have a rifle round. And no one else was using that Stinger. In my games, no one was using them. You know? And that's when the first hit, first nerf hit the gun. Like, they changed the recoil. They changed everything about the gun. The fire rate was changed from 18 to 16. The recoil went from holding it like a normal gun to defeat. Right? You had to just drag the crosser to their feet to hit people with full recoil. And I learned that... Like I re, it re I changed the way that I started playing the game with the Stinger, and I found huge success with it. So I do think that Stinger was too good for its price again, right? But I do not agree with this bullet fall of damage change because right now the gun still gonna be effective in short range. So the so the cost increase affects it only there, but the long range makes it almost, I would say, not really, suck. like, you can't even try with the with this amount of damage, like, it's four, four per bullet, right? That means that the headshot level, uh, headshot damage should be around 58 right now, if I'm not mistaken, because it was 62 before, or 67, 62 or 67, I can't remember, I think 62 long range, above 20 meters, so... Right now, they buffed the ADS of the Stinger to make it better at long-range engagements, and now they think it's overperforming at long-range engagements. Why the hell are we not removing the first bullet accuracy buff that they added to the ADS instead of removing this damage? It's kind of crazy. I think this is over-nerfing the gun. I still will be using it with Yoru because I think it fits perfectly for the ultimate and I can still heavily play uh, Stinger on most runs just because I will be playing with specific angles. But I'm not going to be as flexible with the Stinger just because above 15 meters now I might be dealing 130 <laughs> instead of 150, you know? So I think it's a terrible decision to change the damage of the weapon above 15 meters and remember 15 meters is not a lot like that's the problem is that 0 to 15 and 0 to 20 is a typical engagement range so you're gonna be in a lot of rng situations because you're gonna be dealing damage once within 15 meters range and once within 20 meters range but it's gonna be against the same person because they're, you're gonna be like exchanging positions a little bit and you're gonna be like in between 15 16 
And you're going to deal to the one person in consistent damage, which is something that I really dislike in Valorant. And unfortunately, this is the range that is crucial because most engagements are actually there. Like, for example, if you play in a hookah on Bind, I know Bind is not anymore in the game, but everyone knows Bind and everyone played in a hookah so many times. So when you're standing in a hookah and you're looking outside on sands, that's like 15 meters. So that's like the range that you typically duel with. On, on most of the maps, and you, if you have that range, it's gonna be inconsistent. But if you had like 0 20, most of the duels were actually between 0 to 20. So you didn't have that problem anymore. And I think this is gonna be a huge issue. Uh, people, are gonna, uh, people are gonna have a huge issue with understanding why the damage is so weird. But we'll see. All right. So in general, TLDR, Stinger Change, Cash, good, damage follow off, terrible. Uh, still a decent gun. Okay, still a decent gun, but I think it's gonna be very unwieldy to use unless you're gonna specialize with the gun and you're gonna put a lot of hours and a lot of thinking into how to find success with this gun, which is good, but also it's terrible because it's forced on you. All right, um, social updates. Voice evaluation better. Last year, we began a background launch of the Riot Voice Evaluation, RVE, in North America. RVE will now move into a limited beta phase that will enhance our behavior reports, data collection capabilities, and improve the impact of our comms related behavioral interventions. But it's only still in North America. Okay. Well, I hope they'll, they will bring this voice evaluation beta as soon as possible to Europe, because we badly need it. Like, we really, really, really badly need it as soon as possible. This is what, is, what does what this do? What does this, what does this do? <laughs> Sorry, it's a long day. It's eight hours of streaming. Um, it's going to record all of the voice comms that our players are giving in the game. And when you're going to be reported, this is going to be automatically checked by a bot who's going to... Um, machine learn the language and common phrases and toxic phrases but also i'm assuming this is my assumption don't say that riot is doing that but it will be my assumption that if you have a tool like this you're also gonna monitor the volume and the um intensity of the um of the comms so if they're gonna be too loud or you're gonna have or you're gonna be like screaming or like being really like let's say intense in comms for an extended extended period of time you might actually get punished that would be at least what i would do as a dev if i had a tool like this all right bugs let's see potentially fixed <laughs> i love it because this this chaos zero point not showing correct enemies that are suppressed is something that is in the game for like a year and a half or even more I can't remember the date when KO was released. And they, are, they, they said it that they fixed it like many times. So they just say potentially. <laughs> okay, we'll see. Okay, we'll see. Well, I'm not certain why we're not adding... Oh, actually, no. We do have sounds that are telling you how many are being hit. Uh, anyway. Pathfinding has been improved on Ray's Boombot when chasing an enemy. It can now more move more consistently, jump up small heights, and will do so with smoother movement. Hopefully, because the scary Boombot is, is it terrible, you know? Fix a bug with Boombot getting stuck in a wall and rapidly shaking while making a loud noise. It will now bounce off the wall perusual. Never saw that, but okay. Fix a bug where Yoru's fake out could stuck in mid air in various locations. I wonder if they if if by accident they fix also the fact when Yoru clown, for example, you're on fracture on A side and you're on top of A side and you put the clown from top of A side to ground. If someone shoots it mid air, it disappears. It falls into the ground and doesn't explode, and no one is getting flashed. That was a bug that I um, reported many 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 times already to the devs, and I hope this might actually fix it. We'll see. Fix, bug, fix a bug where Cypher's new neural theft would only reveal one time if he had been killed or the run had changed during the previous cast. Oh, what the hell? I thought this is a design thing that it would reveal only one time if he had been killed. Because what happens is if, if the Cypher throws his Kung Lao um, hat and dies, sometimes you don't even get one of them. 
That's interesting. I thought that's actually the design choice of that. It, apparently, it's not. Interesting. Fix a bug where Cypher's neuron theft reveals more reveals would be interrupted when he was killed after it had been deployed. Okay, so you cannot count it anymore. Now, please add, please add that uh, for this also Yoru ult with KO's zero point and breach ult. Thank you. So this is a bug. I thought it's design. Interesting. Players will no longer make footsteps out here when dropping from Lotus B-side platform to Fountain. B-side platform to Fountain? Wait. Wait a second. Wait a second. Lotus. B-side platform to Fountain. From here to here? You are not... You shouldn't be making noise? What? Ah. Ah. Where are the patch notes? Dude, I'm just so stupid. Here we go. Here are the patch notes. Uh... No longer make footsteps audio when dropping from Lotus B side platform to Fountain. Okay, interesting. Lotus dual volume has been lowered further. We we lowered it in 6.01 as well during the rotation phase. On Lotus players next to each other will rotating the rotation should feel smoother. All of those changes are like. You know? Fountain is on the wall haven. Where? That is so weird. I guess here. Ah, here. Here's the plat Here's the fountain over here. Okay, so on the box. Now it makes sense. Okay. Fix an issue where players were re re responding on the wrong side of their near C side of standing on rotating door at the end. Fix a bug where the Paul Dealman badge could be stuck. <laughs> okay. Fix an issue where friends in Bulldog reload audio is quieter than the, the auto weapons in third person. Okay. Didn't know that's the case. Fix a bug that causes voice chat no longer function when disconnected from the internet for less than 60 seconds. If the internet is disconnected for 60 seconds or less, you will be able to reconnect to voice chat without having to relaunch the game. Well, thank you very much, Riot. All right, my friends. Thank you very much for tuning in to the video and see you guys next time.